Hello everyone, welcome back to another PAL World Guide video. I have an amazing one for you today where I'm showing you how to breed the perfect PALs for fighting, i.e. huge attack stats. PALs you catch in the wild are okay, but through breeding you can combine PALs until you get your PAL to another level with the four passive skills that you need to make it awesome. In this case, I've made the ultimate killing machine a shadow beak with three attack traits on it and one movement. I do in the video make a pal with four attacking traits, Luck, Legend, Muscle Head and Ferocious, giving a huge 85% increase in damage, plus a small increase to health and defense. My Shadow Beak has 65% increase to damage, plus I've also increased his base stats in the video which we will go over later on. So I'm going to show you how to do it, let's start. Now what you want to do is easy. Set up a breeding farm, and I have a guide on that already if you want to check it out where I breed a Jormantide from eggs. What you need to do first is catch pals with the four traits or passive skills that you want. Fortunately, I had caught already every pal I needed in both male and female versions of each. It can be any pals, even level 1 lamals, just so long as they have the four traits you want on different pals. Of course, if you want the legend pal, you're going to have to catch one of the four legends, like Jetragon. Also, it's easier if the pal only has the trait you want and no others, as it will significantly speed up the process. Next, I started to throw different pals into the breeding pen and wait for the eggs to hatch, hoping for any two combinations of traits I wanted to hatch on the same offspring. I started with lots of different things, but I had a Jetragon with Legend trait and a Gamos with Luck, and tried to breed them to get two traits, the offspring being a Van Worm. That didn't really work too well because Jetragon just simply had too many traits to pass on, so I took the Van Worm with Legend that I had received from an egg, and I bred that with a Lamol that had both Luck and Ferocious, which I found at the start of the game. And eventually I bred a Dire Howl with two of the three traits I wanted, but it was two of the good ones, Luck and Legend. I should also point out at this point it was around 30 minutes of breeding and hatching before I got the traits to combine. I just kept making cakes essentially in between, I should also point out I changed my hatching times to zero in the game world settings. I don't really like having to wait for eggs to hatch. I mean, you can get around that by having loads of incubators anyway, but it's really up to you. Next, I tried to breed the Dire Howl with Luck and Legend with another pal that had Musclehead. At the same time, I placed a Depresso and a Sparkit into a second breeding pen, hoping they would breed with one having the skill Ferocious and the other one having the skill Musclehead. Again, around 30 minutes later, after many eggs, the Depresso and Sparkit finally had a baby Fox Parks with Musclehead and Ferocious. So now I had a pal with two of the traits and another pal with two of the other traits. Unfortunately, one was male and one was female. I then simply put them in a pen together, kept the cakes coming, and another 30 minutes later, a Daydream hatched with all four attack stat traits on it, the ultimate killing machine. In total, it took me less than two hours to get a pal with perfect trait stats from four different pals, each having one of the traits on them. I did get a little luck with the genders from eggs, but getting the traits was strangely consistent at around 30 minutes to get the right combinations of traits from breeding. So that is step one, getting a pal with all four traits on it that you want. However, Daydream isn't the pal I was trying to get. I will have to now breed different pals with Daydream until I get the one that I need. And a quick tip here is to make sure that the second pal you're using, the one that doesn't have all four of the traits on it, has zero traits on it because you're more likely for the offspring to be born with four legendary traits. Now I have a daydream, but I want to get these skills, these legendary skills, passive skills, onto my favourite pal Shadowbeak. And you'll need to have a look online at all the parent and offspring combinations and you'll need to keep breeding your pals with all the traits and passing them on to the next one until you get the pal that you need. So for me, I bred Daydream with Mosanda until the offspring Kitsune appeared with all four passive skills. It didn't take too long for it to appear, again maybe 30 minutes or so. Of course you're not always going to pass on the traits or passive skills that you need, no matter what the parent traits are, but having all four on one pal, like I said, and one with no passive skills on it, definitely improves the odds of you passing on all four. Sometimes you get the traits you need, sometimes you get one like this Kitsune who I bred, who received amazing speeds, increased passive skills, which is pretty cool. But eventually I did get the one with the four attacking stats. 
Lastly then, I needed to breed Kitsune with an Astagon to get Shadowbeak, and this proved to be a problem, as I could not catch an Astagon with no traits, and this increased my chances by a lot of not passing on the four skills I needed. And in fact, I never did get Shadow Beak with four attack traits, which is why the one I have has only three. But after hours and hours of trying, and around 30 Shadow Beaks later, with breeding Kitsune and Astagon, and also trying to breed two Shadow Beak offsprings together, I eventually settled for one with 65% attack increase and the speed boost, which I'm happy with, as Shadow Beak is a bit of a slow mount anyway. So now we have our pal with all the traits, it's time to maximize his stats. First you can level him up to 50 and you can see here the jump in his attack. I actually got a bit unlucky with this Shadow Beak, his base damage at level 50 is over 100 less than some of the other Shadow Beaks I have at level 50, so your pal's attacks can vary by quite a lot, in some cases it could be a few hundred. Next I decided to increase his stats using pal souls and you'll need small, medium and large ones to max out his stats. You can find these most easily in a side of chests. Lastly, with all of the breeding, I had a bunch of spare Shadow Beaks to combine in the Pal Condenser. I only managed to get him to, to level 2, as you actually need 117 of the same Pal to get them to 4 stars, but that will take quite a while to do. So guys, there you have it, a Shadow Beak with the highest possible attack. If I wanted to spend a little bit longer, I could get his attack up by a couple hundred more. If I get a Pal with all 4 attacking stats, with a bit higher base damage as well, and then get him to level 4 in the Pal Condenser. Then maybe his attack would be over 1800 or higher, but like I said, this is a very time consuming process. But that is how you do it for yourself. The good thing is that by doing this, it makes all the pals much stronger and they can be much more useful in a fight. And you won't have to rely on any endgame and legendary pals so much because your regular pals should have a lot more attack. For example, my Daydream here is already higher in attack damage than my Jetragon. And also, once you have a combination of traits on one of the pals, so I'll always have my pal with four attack stats on it, it becomes easier to pass that on to other pals in the future as well. So then guys, if you found this guide useful on how to get the maximum attack for your pals in Palfield, like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.